Welcome back to our kitchen. We have another cooking video for you guys today. Today we're going to be featuring um, pasta from Pasta Pretty Please. Um, as you can see, she does wonderful, colorful um, rainbow pasta here. And the best part is that she flavors the pasta and colors the pasta with vegetables and spices. So um, it's a great addition to your pasta. So let's get started. One of the nice things about this pasta is there are very few ingredients. Well, as in all pasta. Um, this one calls for a double zero pasta flour. Uh, we don't have that. We have just regular um, all purpose flour here. And it does say that it is acceptable in the recipe. Um, you would just get a, a nicer, even nicer product if you have the, the double zero flour. Um, we need three large eggs. We have those there and then this calls for tomato paste so ours comes in a tube like this um, and it's a four and a half ounce tube and that is about a half cup so we need a quarter cup so we'll just be using about half of this tube and i'm just going to eyeball that one today okay so we already have our flour in the mixer uh, these recipes specifically are designed for a stand mixer. You can also do it by hand, um, but you will need the paddle attachment if you are doing it in the mixer. I was a little surprised by that. I thought we'd be doing using the dough attachment, but or the dough hook, but um, we're using the paddle. So look at that. All right, so I do have my flour in there already. So I'll get this guy out of the way here. All right. And then we're going to add our tomato paste. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out approximately half of this tube here. Okay, and then we need our three eggs. All right, so there are our three eggs. We're gonna get those in. I'm gonna take a break to wash my hands and then we'll get this going. All right, we're ready to mix our dough together. So we're gonna put our paddle on, lock that in place, and we're gonna be uh, mixing this on a lower speed. And we're gonna do that until we see a um, ball of dough form. And then um, once the, the ball of dough forms, we're going to knead it for some additional time. Um, and you can either do that by hand or in the mixer. So we'll kind of see how this goes here. Okay, I'm just gonna lift this up so you can see. Um, so I would say this is the ball of dough forming. Okay, get that down in there. All right. So um, once we have that ball of dough form, we're going to need it for those three minutes. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on the clock there and we're gonna let that go. All right, so that's been about the right amount of time. Okay. It's kind of formed itself around our paddle here. All right, so the next step is to form this into a ball. And we're going to cover this with saran wrap and let it rest at uh, room temperature. So we don't have um, saran wrap right now, but we do have um, press and seal, so that'll do the trick, okay. Okay, so we're gonna th let that rest here at room temperature. We're gonna check back in it in about half an hour and see how that is, and then we will start sheeting it. So um, you can either roll that out, or if you have a pasta machine, we'll roll it that way. So we'll check back on that in a little bit. Okay, we've allowed our dough to rest. So we are going to prepare our working surface here. Um, just going to 
Ooh, I got a fan on. <laughs> I should probably turn that off first. Right there we go. We're going to just dust our surface. I don't have a, fa a fancy duster or anything. Um, this is just a, a strainer. So we're going to dust that. All right, we're going to open up our dough and we're going to be working with half our dough at a time. Is going to eyeball about half, cut that down, and then I'm going to wrap this again so that the second half of the pasta does not dry. Okay, so we're going to take a rolling pin and we're supposed to roll this out into a rectangle. I need to keep in mind the width of my pasta machine. Um, so, whoops, I'm going to put that over here for now. Um, because you want to make sure it's the right width to fit through the pasta machine. If it's wider, it's um, going to get stuck and tear and rip. So I need to roll this out with our rolling pin here. And we're supposed to get it into a, like a, a rectangle, rough rectangular shape. And we're supposed to get it about like a quarter inch. Thank you. Okay. Trying to make sure I'm not getting too wide. That's why I'm trying to make it a little longer here. to dust both sides with flour so it doesn't get stuck in the machine. The other side is good here. All right, we're ready to make our pasta. Okay, so um, on your machine, you wanna set it to the widest setting. Um, different machines have different um, system so some the widest setting is the highest number some it's the lowest number on our machine uh, it happens to be the the largest number so I believe that is set on the highest number there and we are going to run this through excuse me buddy looks like looks like it's slightly wider I'm gonna see if I can just kind of pull that there We're making some pasta. Is that loud? Ooh. I touch it. I touch it. Be careful. That's right where it goes through. <gasps> wow, what happened? Did it get long and skinny? All right, so we're supposed no, 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 to. That. Supposed to now uh, fold it in half. So that that was the widest setting. I touch it. Yeah, is it soft? Yeah. Okay, and now we're supposed to fold it in half lengthwise. Make sure it's dusted enough on both sides. Actually, probably it's too much on there. And we're supposed to switch this to the second widest setting and let's feed it back through there. Supposed to. Oops. Okay. 
I'm going to set it on the widest setting again. So we're going to be doing a series of rolling it through, folding it, rolling it through on different um, settings. And basically we're going to be building the elasticity into the dough that way. So we will feed it in this way. So we're back to the widest setting again. My dough has gotten a little wider since we've been working with it, so hopefully this will go through all right. Watch your fingers. No, thank you. Okay, now we're going to fold it in thirds like you would a paper for an envelope. Okay. Oh, oh thank you. Okay, and we should be on the widest setting, which I think we are. Yep. So this is like a lamination process. Often you kind of think about that when you're talking about um, like a pastry dough that you're putting butter, folding butter into. Um, but this is for the elasticity of the pasta here. I'm just reading to see what we're doing next here. Looks like we're gonna go back and forth. Um, we're gonna run this. And fold this in half. So we're gonna repeat this process two more times and it's starting to get a little sticky. So we're gonna, no, thank you. We're gonna uh, flour both sides again. Slightly. All right. Oh, it's not ready to be tasted yet. This is raw, we have to cook it. All right, so we're running it through on the widest setting. We'll fold it a half and go to that other setting again. Okay, so there's one. Can you tell, is that on the second? Okay, we're gonna run this through on the second here. Mama's busy right now, sweetie. Okay, 
thing this and then uh, I wanna one more thing on the third Time since I had that. Yummy. Needs to be tightened a little bit here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Obviously, we can fast forward. Have enough elasticity in it now. I'm gonna start going down till the okay. So this will be the last thing for elasticity, and then we'll roll it. So I'll explain that when I get there. Okay, so now we have it rolled for the elasticity, um, and I'm going to start rolling it down to the second smallest setting for our bow tie pasta. I did have it, um, the pasta kind of crumble, and so I had to uh, fit it back together. <laughs> um, but for my first time, I think this has been a pretty easy process. So now we have our pasta um, to the thinnest we need. Obviously you can see it's a very long sheet, so I'm gonna cut these into smaller sheets um, so they're easier to work with. And then we will cut our bow tie pasta. Okay. Okay, so we're ready to cut our pasta and it recommends doing um, about two inches wide by an inch and a half tall. Obviously we don't need to measure that, but we can eyeball it. We just wanna make sure that they are wider than they are tall so we can get that nice bow, sh bow tie pasta shape. Um, they also recommend using a straight cutter um, for the top and bottom and using um, one of these edges, I'm not sure what these are called, for the sides um, so that you can get that fun butterfly shape. We only happen to have this type of color, so that's what we're going to use for both of them. Thank you. 
and then we can just have some spares there. So these are not obviously all the same size. If I wanted, if I wanted to be a uh, perfectionist about it, we could get a ruler out and do that, but we don't care that much about the consistency. As long as they're relatively close, they'll have the same cook time, so. There's a couple different methods. One of the methods they mentioned was having your thumb and your third finger on the edges here and your index finger in the middle. We're simply just going to pinch those edges together. And there's our little bow tie pasta. So I'm gonna need some flour. And I'm going to just dust a section here so I can put the pastas to, to uh, rest there as we go. So some of these are not pretty. I mean, I don't want to not use this one because the edge isn't pretty. That doesn't bother me. Okay. This is very satisfying. So this is one of the easier shapes to learn how to do which is why I picked it for the first time I'm doing pasta. All right, so I finished um, forming all of our pasta and then the next step was to take a clean kitchen towel and lay it over the pasta to let it rest for a few minutes. So that is the step we're at right now. I do have a pot of boiling water. Um, and so we are going to show you what our pasta looks like. Our flour out of the way there. So we have varying shapes and sizes of pasta, but I was not gonna get a ruler out, so I'm happy with this. <laughs> um, so when you do have fresh pasta, you only need to put it in um, boiling water, well, salted boiling water for about one or two minutes. So um, we have our sauce ready. We're gonna go ahead and cook our pasta and enjoy our dinner. So thank you for watching and joining us for our first time making pasta. It was a lot of fun. I will definitely do this again. I think our next, uh, our next pasta we're gonna try is some beet pasta. Uh, and I was reading in the book that if you have frozen beets, uh, the color is even more concentrated. So we're gonna get that all set up and do some of that later. But thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it check out this great book. Um, it's wonderful. I'm definitely going to use it again. So it's pasta pretty please. We're all set. You say bye. bye. All right, thanks for watching.